Hello, my name is Greg Lowen and I am the founder of the Professional Video Alliance, more commonly known as the PVA. Today I am performing an HDR video calibration inside my personal theater. While I use very precise tools for professional level calibration, I am going to talk you through a basic HDR calibration using only the PVA HDR test patterns. I welcome you to join me as I explain how to properly set up your display for HDR viewing. This year we are all celebrating the 6th anniversary of the creation of fiber cables. As part of the celebration, the PVA has collaborated with Fiber to create a series of teaching videos on professional video calibration. The PVA is an association that brings manufacturers and video experts together and allows members to share technology ideas that advance the common goal of increasing video fidelity within the various video industries including the post-production and performance home theater markets. We are hoping that both video professionals and Fiber fans alike will enjoy this wonderful anniversary present. We sincerely desire that the whole AV industry will continue to be more attuned to the need for professional video calibration, and we are focused on providing additional tools for our partners to increase awareness and assist in education while ultimately leading to a better viewing experience. Your viewing experience will be enhanced by performing a video calibration on your display. This will make the viewing content more color realistic, increase the 3D depth, increase the shadow detail, and have the content more closely match the coloring that the director, cinematographer, and colorist envisioned while creating that content. Additional benefits of calibrating a display include reducing power consumption, reducing the eye fatigue, display matching to account for the unique viewer's environment, and assurance that your investment of time and finances is maximized. A video calibrator uses calibration-specific software and hardware to compare and correct the output of a video device to a known standard. This is done by balancing science, knowledge, and practical experience to most accurately reproduce the original artist's intent given a specific viewing environment. All television and film studios create content using standards developed by SMPTE, otherwise known as the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. By using these standards to calibrate studio monitors, we can effectively match the creator's viewing experience by calibrating our own monitors to these standards within our own viewing environment. This will allow us to experience the visual content in the same way as the director did when they created the content. There are many other benefits relating to calibrating a video display. You can achieve colorful and lifelike picture quality, compensate for environmental lighting issues, extend the life of the display, save energy, maximize image detail, and minimize eye fatigue. While you may not have immediate access to these advanced resources, we can start a journey towards image fidelity and create a more pleasing image by doing some simple things that will definitely assist increasing our viewing enjoyment. Technology has dramatically changed in the audio-video industry over the past two decades. We've moved from watching Laserdiscs to DVDs to Blu-rays to 4K UHD discs with high dynamic range. Cabling has also changed and these new formats require new high bandwidth HDMI cables to pass the huge amount of audio and video information embedded in the digital signals. Are you prepared for the new 8K signals that are now being broadcast? Always consider the quality of your cabling while pursuing optimal image fidelity. 4K resolution has allowed for bigger screens. HDR or high dynamic range allows for inky black levels with more real life light output levels. 10-bit signal processing and the larger color space of BT2020 allows for many more color shades and increased color detail. Together, all these factors allow for a large increase in viewing enjoyment. Remember, it is essential that your display be correctly set up to take advantage of these technology advancements. First, you will have to ensure that your display is being fed a 4K HDR image, and the display will have specific settings related to this type of signal. These settings should be different than the settings adjusted for SDR. The PVA HDR patterns, when correctly transmitted to the display, will put your display into HDR mode and give you access to the HDR-specific controls. Now take a few minutes to get familiar with your remote control and finding out how to access the video picture settings within the menu system of the television. You may need to pause this video and take the time to figure out how to navigate your TV's picture settings as you will not be able to calibrate your display without this skill set. Remember that the video is suited to calibration of both video displays and projectors with the main difference of having the need to strictly control ambient lighting in projector applications. Your viewing experience is directly related to the quality of your viewing environment. Ideally a reference room for a projector is very dark. 
An ideal room for a television display should have minimal lighting so the viewer can focus on looking at the image on the display while not being distracted by other objects or lighting in the room. Remember that with HDR, a good black level is essential to see the benefits of the high dynamic range. Do not worry if you have a room with varied ambient lighting conditions, as there are usually enough settings within the TV to adjust for both day and nighttime viewing environments. Take a few minutes to consider your unique room situation. Perhaps turn off the majority of your room's lights and pull your window blinds down to help create a closer reference viewing environment. While professional displays usually do not have a variety of preset modes, almost all consumer displays do. There are usually many preset modes to allow for a variety of setting combinations. Please remember that based on the definition of calibration, only one set of values can be at calibration. All the other variations of settings will be at a preference. Look for a preset mode that will be closest to reference. It will most likely be labeled as pro mode, custom mode, cinema mode, or movie mode, and is dependent on the manufacturer. Your display may also have specific modes for day or night. If so, these two modes would be an ideal starting point for further optimizing the display for specific day or nighttime settings. Once you select the mode to be calibrated, work through all the settings within that mode, taking special note of controls like auto color, auto enhancement, true motion, dynamic contrast, etc. These controls are usually added to a display to make it look unique from other displays and should generally be turned off to enjoy a reference image. Also make note of any potential settings like HDMI limited, HDMI full, standard or enhanced, low versus high, etc. These settings have to do with how the display manipulates the electronic image. Computer signals and video signals require different settings. Video signals for television content should always be set to limited, standard, or low. If there is a setting for automatic, that will generally be okay too, and your display will automatically select the correct setting. On displays that have a backlight control, this setting should be at its maximum setting to allow the display to be as bright as possible. This is specific for HDR. On projectors, the iris should be fully open and the lamp or laser setting should be on high. If the projector has a dynamic iris, it should generally be on and set to the high setting. Generally speaking, HDR has very specific standards that the manufacturer should follow during the manufacture of the display to ensure correct imaging. Much of what we are doing is evaluating the implementation of HDR by the manufacturer. Once you have selected the starting picture mode for the HDR signal, you want to ensure that the black signal is correct and that you can see the details down to black, while black is not gray but actually inky black. Most manufacturers label this control the brightness control. As the control is moved down, details close to black will disappear or become crushed. As the control is increased, blacks will move from black to gray, and the display will lose perceived depth and look washed out. Generally speaking, the control should be left at its default position. If it is extremely difficult to see the data points above 0%, then consider turning up the brightness control by a couple of positions. Using the PVA black clipping test pattern, adjust the display so reference black, that is box 64 or 0%, blends into the background and only boxes 68 and above are visible. Sometimes it's very hard to see boxes 68 and 72, and this is okay so do not worry. Just ensure that the boxes 64 and below are all the same and that you can see most of the boxes above 64. We are trying to optimize and increase performance by doing 15 minutes worth of adjustments. If you desire a higher level of precision, we suggest hiring a PVA certified professional with the appropriate tools, training, and experience. We now have set the black level. Now let's set the white level. Again, generally speaking, the contrast or picture control should be at the default setting. While viewing the PVA two-direction stair-step grayscale pattern, you can see how well your display shows 1000 nits of information. Only the very brightest of displays can make 1000 nits of light output. Most displays will take the data at this light output value and make it dimmer and within the output range of the display. This process is called tone mapping and is specific to the manufacturer. Most manufacturers will tone map the last 30% of the signal that is below the maximum light output ability. If you cannot see the steps up to 1000 nit, you can try to turn down the contrast control to see if this will allow you to see these steps. Please do this judiciously, as, as you will most likely also be taking away from light output. 
You can also look for the dynamic contrast and dynamic tone mapping controls and consider adjusting these controls to allow for seeing more detail towards 1000 nit. After the adjustment of backlight brightness and contrast, the display should correctly show details close to white, like with scenes showing bright clouds, a wedding dress, ice hockey, or snow scenes without clipping or washing out the signal. We are well on our way to improved image fidelity. Next we consider the grayscale or color of gray. Each step in the PVA grayscale steps pattern should look gray, with black looking black and white looking white. These steps should not look reddish or bluish. Adjust the white balance control on the television to D65 or 6500 Kelvin. If the steps still look blue, select a lower value. If the steps look red, select a higher value. Some displays have a cool, neutral, or warm setting. If this is the case, select the warm setting. A PVA certified video professional would use expensive instrumentation to more accurately tune in this adjustment. While well, almost all modern video displays have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, the image can usually be zoomed or resized. To maximize image fidelity, you want to ensure that the whole image is being displayed with the correct dimensions. Ensure that the display is not only set to 16 by 9 or full mode, but is also set to pixel perfect or just scan to ensure that all pixels can be viewed. While well, looking at the PVA alignment test pattern, adjust the display to ensure that white 0% overscan line is showing around the edge of the image. This will ensure that your display is not cutting off part of the image and also ensure that the display is forming one-to-one -one pixel mapping for the highest amount of detail possible. Now we can adjust the sharpness control. On today's high resolution displays, having too much sharpness is just as bad as having too soft of an image. The correct setting for sharpness is no sharpness. With some manufacturers, this setting may be at the zero or the off position. With others, it may be at the 10%, 15% or the middle position. We desire the image to be crisp without artificial edge enhancement or excessive softening. Using the PVA alignment test pattern, look at the center of the crosshair. Turn the sharpness up to visualize excessive edge sharpening and then turn it down until the edge sharpening goes away but the image does not become too soft or fuzzy. By correctly setting the aspect ratio while ensuring one-to-one -one pixel mapping and optimal sharpness, you have made the image look as crisp as possible. Let's now consider the parameter of gamma. Gamma is actually referred to as the EOTF, or Electro Optical Transfer Function, and should be the same on all HDR displays, with the exception of the part of the image that is being tone mapped. Another term to describe the EOTF is absolute, again referring to it being the same on all displays regardless of technology or peak light output. It can be further defined as a difference in light output as the display goes up the steps from black to white. The EOTF of HDR should be set to EOTF, as it is absolute. Though many manufacturers use the value of 2.4, with 2.2 being in a bright room and 2.4 being in a dark room, or with a projector. Look, look for an ETOF or gamma control on the display. The control might be labeled 2.0, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, .2 .2 or -3, -2, -1, -0, -1, or some variation of that. Select the 2.4 option as a starting point. Using the PVA grayscale step pattern, you can visualize that 2.2 will make the image look brighter and 2.6 will make the image look darker. If you have a minus three to plus three slider control, turn the control down to allow for just seeing the steps above reference black. Some displays will have a BT1886 setting. This is a great setting for displays that are in an environment with ambient light or with a display that does not have very good black levels. You may also want this adjustment to be higher if there is ambient light in the room, and if the room is darker, it can be lower. PVA certified video professionals use instrumentation to ensure the correct level of light output. If you have a projector, consider the lamp setting and the iris setting to increase or reduce light output while remembering that projectors really need a dark environment to look their best. Our perception of color accuracy is very much related to our ability to discern correct versus incorrect flesh tones. Let's consider the PVA skin tone pattern. It is impossible to look at color patches and evaluate the accuracy of any of the colors represented, but we can quickly look at the model and make an instant evaluation of color accuracy based on the evaluation of their skin tone. Before adjusting the color control, ensure that all settings involving color enhancement, auto flesh tone, and others are disabled. Also ensure that if there is a color space setting that it is set to expanded or rec 2020, keeping in mind that sometimes auto may be the correct setting. 
while viewing the PVA multi skin tone pattern adjust the color control up and down. Down will make the models look washed out and pale, while up will make the models look oversaturated and sunburned. Find the correct position and make a note of this setting. Repeat the same adjustment using the PVA restaurant scene. The correct position should be the same as with the PVA multi skin tone pattern. If it's not the same, a middle value between the two positions should be selected. Lastly, verify the color setting by re revisiting all three PVA skin tone patterns. This would also be a good time to revisit the gamma setting. Reconsider this adjustment while viewing these same PVA skin tone patterns to verify that the display is neither too dark or too dim and skin tones look correct. Congratulations! In less than 30 minutes, you have done a quick and effective optimization of your video display or video projector for HDR. Always remember that quality cables really do make a difference, and I highly recommend using fiber cables for all your HDMI cabling needs. If you would like to learn more about fiber cables, go to the fiber website. If you would like to have more information about having a PVA video calibration or attending a PVA video calibration training class, please visit the pva.tv website. I hope you have a great day and enjoy the movies.